What is good? We're back. Should have went with the backwards hat. I knew you were going to go backwards hat. I should have went backwards hat. We could have been backwards hat buds. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Up, we got man? Austin. Today, we're going to hit you with some moves to make. The season is upon us. We wanted to do one more peruse uh, through some of our ADP of, of maybe some high end, some middle end, and some low end guys that, that we like right now to buy before season, before maybe they explode here. So, um, right off the rip. You know, we've we've been talking all off season. It, it seems like on the higher end side, you can you're still able to potentially get Amon Ross St. Brown. He's probably the easiest access to elite points, and we've got whole shows dedicated to that. Next in the list, there uh, coming in at ADP two twelve, we got AJ Brown, probably one of the next best buys if you're looking for an elite wide receiver at a at a at a discount. His stock has slowly went down, and maybe even the news of Jahan Dotson has even softened it a little bit more. Probably not a ton. I know there's a lot of you know Dotson haters, but it's just one more person that depth was lacking on the Eagles receiving core. Now they've kind of added to it, got a, a good third there, I think, but. You know, those are two probably elite buys, but I don't really want to focus on those guys in this next area. And in, in that third round, I think we're seeing two buys that both of us like here. I like Drake London still. He's coming in at 307. Um, and the reason I like him is because I think some of it is baked in right now be, of, of the quarterback upgrade. I think we can go one more tier with what Drake London's production is going to be. I think he is just going to be an absolute target hog here, you know, between him and Pitts, who I could easily put on this list as well. You know, people aren't going to like the Pitts nearly as much as I think the, the Drake London fair fanfare is currently. Um, people are a little mad at, at Pitts at this point, which is probably is a better buy, get you a little more bang for your buck. Cause I do think Pitts is going to uh, explode. So I could put him on the must moves to make must buy list right here, but I'm going to stick with Drake London. Kirk can obviously facilitate two to three, fantasy receivers or tight ends in an offense. We've seen it. Um, and then worst case scenario, we have Penix coming in if anything happens. So it's really a really nice, we've gone the polar opposite of what Drake London has seen uh, the last few years in no quarterbacks to a plethora of what we feel is going to be good quarterback production and probably the best fantasy points we've seen from someone like Drake London. He's just sets up to be a great number one. He's priced already as a number one, but I think we can get up into the next stratosphere here with him. He is still really young. He can go in to be that alpha male. What do you, what do you think about Drake London there, Austin? So I like Drake London a lot more as a buy in dynasty rather than redraft to tell you what, man, right. I, I almost, I think he's going a little too early in redraft because I mean, I'm seeing him go like, receiver 10 receiver 12 in that range and uh yeah. it, you know every time whether it's a mock or a real draft i'm on the clock and i'm looking at london and it's like i'm just i don't feel comfortable grabbing him at you know where he's going in redraft but in dynasty i am 100 on board with you i i think i mean drake london is just the type of player that you know once you acquire him you just hang on to him for the next five plus years and uh, you know yeah. you you enjoy winning with him because he's only going to get better i know you got to pay a pretty penny but uh the production that's going to be pretty as well yeah i guess that's kind of my point is that i, I don't mm -hmm. i don't think you're not a, you're not quite at an elite stature of, of what you have to pay for him i'm looking at some dynasty daddy trades here we got a first and a second uh which i've sent out in the i got late rookie drafts i've sent a first and a second for drake um wasn't able to pull it off he, he wanted to hold you know, there are some other interesting, you know, th there are certainly ones that go down for a one and a two. Uh, Brandon Ayuk and a third for Drake London. Don't know how you how you feel about that one. I don't mind that at all. I prefer Ayuk over London, mm -hmm. but, I, but I understand. I'm, I'm also very, very high on um, Brandon Ayuk. I got offered, for what it's worth, I got offered a 2027 first and Ramondre for my Drake London, and I turned it down. I, yeah, I, the, fir the first was, yeah, I just... It wasn't atrocious in value, and maybe if it was like a 2024 first, uh, maybe I would have been a little bit more inclined to do it, especially if it was early. But um, yeah, man, I I don't think Casey, you you said you offered a first and a second to get Drake London. Mm -hmm. It does not surprise me that that got turned down. I, I would have been surprised if you told me the opposite. I would have been surprised if you told me that got it done. I think uh, London's, you know, he's a t you have to pry him out of the hands yeah. of whatever GM that has him. They do not want to part ways with Drake London, and rightfully so. You know, yeah, I, I, I see a lot of it's it's 
the the value seems to fluctuate. I've seen some deals get done with them for like around that same value, and the other people just won't won't let them won't let them go. Would you rather have Jalen Waddle or or Drake London moving into the future here? Jalen Waddle, I am I am so high on Jalen Waddle. You're asking the wrong yeah. guy, Casey. I well, mean, I'm a, I'll, I'll buy Jalen Waddle all day, but I think I'm I think I'm taking Drake London there. I think Waddle's one of the best buy lows right now, man. I oh, think for just, sure. I, mean, I think we, we've, we've covered some we've covered some Waddle <laughs> on this podcast for the last few years. I, I like it. I do. I do like. I do like Waddle quite a bit. All right. Um, you had Dalton Kincaid on this list, and I think I think that's a also a really really good buy at this point. And we're usually talking tight end premium. If it's if it's non premium, I'm not as bullish on buying and and getting into the tight end. But we're always talking tight end premium. Those are the leagues I want to play, and we'll call it tight end premium 1.5 here. He's at four four one in our ADP. I think that's a good deal for him. What's your thoughts on Dalton Kincaid and and uh, why why he's a he's a buy before he explodes here? Yeah, man, and it's wild how one individual, one person can truly change his ADP, can truly change the just consensus thought process on Dalton Kincaid, and that one player is Sam Laporta, right? Some a, another rookie tight end that was absolutely fantastic and overshadowed all of you know the bright quality production that Dalton Kincaid had during his rookie campaign. I mean, his and, and I really mean this, Casey. I think Kincaid's rookie season was top tier he ranked for context fourth all time in receptions this is for i'm talking single season rookie season for a tight end dalton kincaid fourth all time in receptions fifth all time in targets and 10th all time in yards like to be top 10 in those three categories that's not bad at all man that is not bad at all especially when you have two wide receivers you know well, really one wide receiver in front of you, that being Stefan Diggs, who, by the way, is out of town. On top of that, obviously, you also have Gabe Davis out of town. Uh, but what's not being talked about, Casey, as a rookie, he was the tight end eight. I'm talking Dalton Kincaid, the tight end eight or better in 44% of his games. I know I was just hitting on Diggs and Gabe Davis' departure. With those two being gone, uh, Buffalo now has the second most vacated targets, 317. Mm. And this is, uh, and I'm going to keep going on Dalton Kincaid for another minute or two. Uh, I yeah, just, I, I think he is such a screaming buy right now, man. He finished Kincaid, that is, finished the 12th most fantasy points in NFL history for a rookie tight end. He had just over 150. Dude, Diggs, ready? Diggs, 160 targets. Gabe Davis, 81 targets. We, we love the age. We love the size, like 24 years old, 6'4", 240, a former first round pick. Casey, you know, I love draft capital a little too much. Admit it. You know, I'll, I'll admit it. Uh, you know, that 25th overall first round pick just a year ago. Uh, yes. Yeah, Sam Laporta went just a few picks later, early second round. And uh, shout out to Sam Laporta, man, because he did have the goat rookie mm. tight end season. But, you know, a a few other things to wrap it up. 3.9% drop rate for Dalton Kincaid. That's something I love to see. And you know who else loves to see it? Josh Allen. And I think that really helped instill trust and ultimately, you know, benefited, uh, helped them build stronger chemistry with one another. I just think at this point, there's no question that Dalton Kincaid is in prime position to be the top receiving option in Buffalo and this is just the very beginning of an extremely promising NFL career for Dalton Kincaid. Yeah, no, I, I I fully agree with you. I fully expect Dalton Kincaid to lead this team in in almost every category. I think it's going to be he's going to yep. be the he's the gotta. the chain mover, the red zone guy. Obviously, there's going to be some little bit of knocks mixed in there, which never loved that contract to begin with. Not really sure why they did it, but this new iteration of this Bills offense, uh, I think Kincaid is their best playmaker to date. We'll see what happens with, with Keon Coleman and the development, but it seems like it's going to, you know, he's not, doesn't strike me as somebody who's going to come out there right away and just be dialed completely. And he's going to have probably have some up and down games, but I think Kincaid really came on at the end of last season and was really developing a rapport with, with Josh Allen. So I, I, I love it right here. We got some trades. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. 
we got a 25 first and a second for Dalton Kincaid. What are your thoughts there? Tight end premium, 1.5. Yeah, no, it's it's not enough. I, w- I would prefer Dalton Kincaid. Same. How about uh, Kincaid, Jaden Reed, Drake London? Okay, tight end premium, That that's a lot 1. better. 1.5. Um, uh, I, think, I think I would still go Kincaid, man. I really think I would still go Dalton Kincaid side. And I've, I've kind of cooled down a little bit on Jaden Reed. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've, Dalton, I've been Dalton. I've been seeing there's a couple of Brock Bowers Dalton Kincaid trades up here, one or two <laughs> straight up, one or two with a little second or a third on the Brock Bowers side. How do you feel about that? Second or third on Brock Bowers side. So Bowers um, and a two or Bowers and a three uh, for Kincaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was a second, I think that I think it's even. I, th- mm-hmm. I think it's about fifty fifty. Um, I think it kind of comes down to personal preference at that point. Like it's that that's so tough for me because I, I, I still love Brock Bowers. Nothing has changed Casey. I I'm, I yeah. still have the same exact, you know, evaluation thought process on Brock Bowers. Um, I don't know. I guess uh, I'll take the known there, give, you know, give me, give me Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. I'm, I'm right. with you. Right. No, I, I think I don't, it's not, it's not hating on Brock, but it's, you know, when we have these Ricky discussions, the further I get into this, game and and you know talking about the game just the known is 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 so much nicer you know you you can't win without venturing into the unknown and getting the value spikes from there but knowing how good dalton kincaid is in the situation that he's in and 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 all that like i just I'm, i'm in i'm in there how about this this one i think i would go the other way on trey mcbride or dalton kincaid in a second my gut tells me my gut tells me i should take trey mcbride here um, same it's again this is this is close man like I, I loved Kincaid I loved what I saw from him and then the situation just got astronomically better you know yeah our our ADP has those guys back to back uh McBride okay. and Kincaid so getting the weight on the Kincaid side seems to be uh, but I think I think McBride's the tight end one um uh, right now in, in dynasty yep yeah and I, I don't have Kincaid too far behind um, and I like Laporta. It's no, no, no shot on Laporta. The touchdowns are going to be good. I just don't know how if the volume is going to be as good as Trey McBride's and Kincaid's in, and then the premium. You know, I like mm-hmm. that. But the TDs get offset. I think both those guys should have good TD years, though. So, all right, let's keep it moving off the Dalton Kincaid there. I love it. Love the buy. Love love getting some tight end love in there. We we even snuck a little Kyle Pitts in there, who's going at five three here. A couple other buys as we're scrolling through here. T. Higgins at 5'11". It feels like T's just gotten kind of disrespected all offseason long, and I feel like he's about to come back through here and make a statement. I feel like there's probably an okay buy opportunity on T. Higgins. I haven't seen any recently uh, trades for T. Higgins, um, but maybe that's something after the show I got to go dive into, see who's got T on some teams and, quick, and see what that costs. question me. for you, Casey. What's that? T. Higgins, over 1,000 yards this season? Yes. I, f- I feel very confident. In that just, as well. If Burrow's in there, I, I I think so. It was good to see Chase back on the field yesterday or today, whatever day that was. Um, so that was getting a little concerning of, mm-hmm. of what's going mm-hmm. on there. But yes, I think I think T comes out there and has an outstanding year. If Burrow's healthy, I think it's a thousand uh, for for T easy. Yeah, I kind of look at last year's it, almost like a throwaway year. Like that was not who T Higgins is. Mm-hmm. You know, no. No, um, but really, what I was getting to is, you know, in all off season, we've been talking about it. I think two of the two of the best buys of of all of the the, the wide receivers are JSN coming in at six oh six. I can't resist him in a rookie dra- or in a uh, startup draft. I-, I love getting him in the sixth seventh round, and then uh, Rashi Rice uh, again. You know, six oh nine just came out there and was. You know, outstanding in, in targets per route run uh, before he was a, kind of a full time player in week eight. And then after week eight, he was really a big part of that offense moving forward. I think he's going to be a big part of that offense. Travis Kelsey isn't going to be there forever. He's 34 years old. And I think he can kind of come into that Travis Kelsey type of role, that intermediate stuff and just eat mm-hmm. all that up. And we can we can get worthy doing some down the field stuff. We'll see if Hollywood sticks around. You know, Hollywood leaves and 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 Kelsey goes to greener pastures at 35 or 36. You know, that even with the suspense of, of Rashi Rice, it feels like everybody's kind of pushed him down. I think if that wasn't looming and that, that stuff didn't happen in the offseason, he'd be a little higher. So that's a good time to strike it. And JSN, I just feel like it's just a matter of time before he really pops off. So I love those two buys for, for either one of those guys. I, I'd trade back end first for in rookie drafts this year for 
either one of those two guys. Yeah, I've been seeing uh, I've been seeing a lot of JSN love lately, like a lot of it on Twitter. Let's go. Um, Let's it's go. just uh, Let's, it's I feel like I haven't. Season, seen so that. everybody's got to start spreading love on guys they've been a little lukewarm on, so they you know they can't come back of being haters. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen uh, JSN Love in honestly what feels like n- about a year, man. You yeah. know, just before his his rookie campaign started, and then uh, you know, obviously slower start to his career than what consensus would like. But uh, you know, he's I'm very much still on board on JSN. I know you you absolutely are as well, Casey. Hmm. Love it. I'm I'm all in. I'm, I just can't I can't go from being the number one guy and being this good and, and then having some context surrounded with it and then just being like, oh, he's not. But he was actually pretty good last year. Just injury situation, yada, yada, yada. This is going to be a completely different offense. A lot more 11, a lot more explosion. Let's get JSN on the outside a little more, move him around. Uh, I think it's going to be great. Uh, but you you had a, a, a possible sell here in this range, 7-12 coming in. Uh, you're you're selling an old right here in Devontae Adams. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so Devontae Adams, I still would not be surprised if he had north of a thousand yards this year. Uh, it wouldn't blow me away if he was, you know, under it. But uh, I, I look at Adams as a wide receiver who is still has gas left in the tank. I'm not anticipating like a Julio Jones type of fall off like like that was, you know, that you couldn't even brace for it. It was just, you know, he sunk and, and his, <laughs> his value never returned. Unfortunately, no. you know, Julio all time, all time, incredible, you know, walk in hall of fame. I, I have nothing but respect for Julio Jones, incredible talent, incredible production. And uh, sometimes you just can't see it coming, man. Whether it was like Todd Gurley's a relatively similar, similar, you know, type of player where, or, or sorry, type of outcome where, you know, the, the drop off was so fast and, and I don't see that happening with Devonte Adams. I think it'll be much more gradual, but I do think Devonte Adams, you know, is, is more of a sell than any, anything. Um, the, at this point, man, the quarterback situation, it did not get it. What, you know, shout out to Gardner Minshew, man. He's, he is what he is. I think he's one of the best backup quarterbacks in the entire NFL. I think he's of course a very low end starter, he was fine for Indianapolis. Hell, he basically led them to the playoffs. Uh, they, they, they probably should have beat the Texans in that final game. Had you know that backup running back not dropped the ball. Mm. Uh, that's that's a you know conversation for another day. But uh, Minshew, the point I'm getting at is uh, you know he's serviceable. He he was fine for Indianapolis. He was able to support Michael Pittman Jr., who was candidly over a thousand yards. Mm. He was uh, Pittman off the top of my head. I think he was wide receiver fourteen. Uh, he was like just behind Nico Collins for what it's worth. So uh, it was reassuring. It was nice to see that Minshew could provide that production for one dominant receiver in, in an offense. I do believe, yes, he can still support Adams. But, uh, you know, when we look back a year from today, Casey, you know, Devonte Adams value is only going to decline, man. He is unfortunately at this point in his career. And, and I'm going to give you a lazy take here, but man, you look at the age and then you think about how consensus their evaluation process, how they evaluate each player. You, they simply, a lot of them will literally look at the age and just, Oh, he's 30 years old. He's 28. And it's like, it's not the greatest approach of course, but I'm just telling you what the, how the market will view Devonte Adams a year from today. You will not be able to get what he's worth. And maybe Devonte's a buy a year from today. But right now, I am selling Devonte. I, I still think he has, you know, a handful of value just simply due to his name, uh, because he's been nothing short of spectacular, especially in the fantasy playoffs. Really, about the past four years, if you pull up his numbers, week sixteen, week seventeen, dude, he's been nothing but a league winner. But uh, I, I, yeah. I kind of think it's time to, uh, you know, to cash in and see what you can get for Devonte. What do you realistically? You think someone out there would pay a a mid 2025 first. Do you think there are GMs out no. there that would, would pay that? No, I don't, you think, don't so. I think you don't think anybody out there would, uh, what about like a late 2025 first? I don't think maybe, so. I mean, maybe, maybe mid season when, the uh, when they're really trying to win. win. What's that? I was saying maybe mid season when a GM is desperate, needs wide receiver depth and is really trying to win. Maybe someone would be willing to spend a 2025 first. Every league is different, but right. uh, I mean, if you could get that type of return, I I would smash that in a second. I know, yeah. I know that you know every league is different. So, yeah, no, I I, I sold Devonte in a league where I was heading for the rebuild, probably a year early. 
I mean, that's kind of what you want to do. You know, like you said, with the older guys, you know, you can go through all of them and and, and say, you know, you, you want to get out before it's too late. And it might maybe you're a hair late on on getting out on Adams. He was still wide receiver 10 last year. I think he's going to repeat right. and be in the top 10 again this year. I think Minshew is a good candidate to keep him there. I think that this whole Raider offense is, is going to be a little bit better. I don't know if, if Minshew will be the guy for the whole year or not. It seems like a play to kind of keep potentially Pierce's job afloat a little more because, you know, it seems like Minshew week one gives you a better chance to win than than O'Connell, but maybe that was, you know, a better play for the long term. Uh, but I do like the the fact of, of Minshew and Adams and, and really Jacoby, who's going to be on the list of a buy here yeah. for me. Uh, Shout out but, to Jacoby Myers, man. If you know if you're if you're a I, I actually kind of like Devonte Adams in redraft uh, where you can get him um, and some best balls. I've been I've been drafting Devonte Adams, but I do think if you could cash out, I think mid mid season's probably a better time to cash out than than right now. I don't know if when when he's racking up the points and you need him, you know you might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of that uh, that that guy who's got the the championship roster and he's ready to go and just maybe lost somebody. Yeah, so, and. And that was a dynasty take. What I was talking about, right. I'm, I'm with right. you. I think that I find Devonte significantly more appealing in redraft. That is mm-hmm. ADP. You know, same, same. All right, let's go through some some more. We'll hit you with some mid guys, and then some later round guys that that I kind of like here at our ADP of, of moves to make. So um, we were talking Raiders. Um, we could we could hit you with a little Jacoby Myers all off season. He's been a favorite buy of mine. He he. If I can get him for a second, I'll take him. This is wide receiver twenty four last year. Uh, this is just a good player. Do they have a great third there in Vegas? No, not really. I guess Brock Bowers could be that third. And I really like Trey Tucker. He's somebody that I, I'm a big fan of the stash of Trey Tucker. I think he's th- shown some juice. I do really like Jacoby Myers. I think he's a good ad for a good roster where you need a, a, wide, a third wide receiver or you got a bunch of flexes. He can get you in there, and I think he can get you double-digit points. Uh, a lot of weeks and and uh, just show up for you. And he's at 1301. So he's real cheap in the game here. Uh, and then Cortland Sutton's another one that's kind of interesting right around that same range in that kind of 13th, 14th round that you can get him. Nobody really wants him because he's a little older. The way we're seeing Bo Nix operate this, this Sean Payton offense, I think Cortland Sutton can have a lot of life. And much like I was just saying, Jacoby Myers uh, and the wide receiver, you know, if you have to start three wide receivers or you have extra flexes and you need a starter, I think Sutton and guys like Sutton and Myers can give it to you and get you in those double digits every week and not not burn you. And then if they score a touchdown, great week from those guys. Cortland had a decent year last year with everything going wrong for the Broncos. And I think just from the way we've seen Bo Nix operate this offense, I think we're going to be able to see a lot of first down, you know, not going to be a bunch of big chunks, I don't think, from from Sutton, but it'll be a bunch of chain moving red zone kind of stuff from Sutton. And I, I think, I think it's a really good um, buy. It's not sexy. Ne- neither one of those guys are sexy. That's why we let off with the sexy guys. Uh, but now we get to the point where you, you have to build a little bit of depth in there and it gets unsexy and it's okay to just not have the sexy name at this point and the beauty pageant uh, in the 12th, 13th, 14th round and the guys who have been out there and scored fantasy points for your team. And Sutton and Myers, are, I think, are both guys right there that I'm really interested in in, in that kind of like mid role there, if that makes sense, Austin. Yeah, the uh, the so, so I love the Myers call. He's been a top 30 wide receiver now three years consecutive, I believe. And he's his ADP is wide receiver 55 in redraft. So I'm just saying, man, he's he's again a value. And Sutton's interesting, right? So I think of Cortland Sutton. The first thing I it crosses my mind, I'm like, I, I want nothing to do with Cortland Sutton. And then in reality, when we're actually drafting yesterday, so yesterday I, I did have a draft, a real draft. Dude, I've never wanted Cortland Redraft? Sutton so bad. Uh, yes, I've never yeah. wanted Cortland Sutton so bad in my life. We were in like, <laughs> like I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. But like we we're in, I think it was like round twelve, and I'm like, oh my god, like I, I am praying Sutton gets back to me. He's one of the cheapest wide receiver ones that you can find on mm. any roster. He has a new quarterback who looks to be. Uh, hopefully, you know, could could replicate relatively similar or better stats than what Ross put up last year. I, you know, it, it, I, I'm not saying it, that's going to happen, but the future in Denver, you know, th- there's there's a lot of reason for them to be optimistic. And 
Jerry Judy out of town, right? That's another plus. However you slice it, that is a plus for Cortland Sutton. And on top of that, man, yes, they did add the speedster in Troy Franklin. Yeah, he's but, barely uh, seeing the field, though. Yeah, right, right. That, well, uh, that that was so he was a day three pick, a very early day three pick. Mm-hmm. But what you said is factual. I just, you know, all things considered, man, uh, you you got to be, you have to be at least interested in Cortland yeah. Sutton at his ADP. What did he have? Ten touchdowns last season? I think. I think, I think so. And that, obviously, that helped, you know, prop mm-hmm. up some of of the deficiencies of what was going on there. But I think that you're going to see a lot different of a situation of how that offense operates this year. I think Sutton can be a big part of of kind of how they move up and down the field. Um, but gr- that's a good way to phrase it. A very cheap wide receiver one on that team. Cause it's going to be Mims. And then, you know, they just said they were trading Tim Patrick. So who's, you know, is it Brandon right, right. John? Who, who's, who's the next guy up? You know, is it tight end? You know, they're going to throw to the running back a lot. Cause that's kind of how they're going to operate. Yeah, no, I love it. And so in this range, you kind of had some rookies that you were eyeballing. Give me, give me a shout on, on the, the two rookies that you like here. Yeah, man. And, and I do my best to not overreact to the preseason. I think it, it matters to a certain degree, but I, I've been very vocal regarding the preseason. I think it's a little overvalued in our in consensus evaluations. I think a lot of people will see like snap percentage or just see production from one game and people will freak out and be like, OK, they're they're a lock to be a lot more relevant this year. And I don't think that's always the right approach, but someone who, and I'm going to totally contradict what I just said, somebody who has been <laughs> popping off in preseason is Jermaine Burton. Mm. I really like Jermaine Burton a lot prior to the preseason. And I'm not going to lie, when you have a preseason, a, a good preseason, it does make me feel a little bit better, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. And, uh, you know, Burton, who here, here's the first thing that I will mention about Jermaine Burton, man. He has first round NFL talent. I really believe there was there's a world that exists where he could have been a first round pick if he did not have off the field issues. Yeah. Right. If If there were no prior issues. I think there was a chance. If not, it, I really think we would have seen him go like that Keon Coleman or like Lad McConkey early second type of range. Uh, let's let's start yapping about uh, Jermaine Burton, though, man. Uh, you know, we, we saw the day two draft capital. We saw him lead Alabama in yards and touchdowns. We saw him finish second in the entire 2024 class in yards per reception. He only trailed Javon Baker who another sleeper. A lot of people really like Javon Baker. A lot of people are high on Javon Baker. Uh, another guy who's looked good in camp, but back to Jermaine Burton. Uh, he's, you know, aside from flashing in training camp and the preseason, what if Cincinnati fails to retain T Higgins, right? There's, there's a possibility that that happens. There definitely is. Um, I think, sure. I think at this point, if they barely it, want to pay it, Chase, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. The hell, hell, they haven't. They still haven't. Yeah. But, but I know they're going to. Yeah, uh, they but will. you, you better believe that Jermaine Burton will inevitably be in a prime position to be one of Joe Burrow's top weapons if T. Higgins leaves. Right, and and for years to come, man. Like J- Jermaine Burton's not going anywhere. He's six foot, just under two hundred pounds. He had no drops last season off of fifty-seven targets. Uh, 80th percentile 40 time at four, four, five, you know, speed was fine. Uh, first in college football in a dot at 20.2. I mean, never a bad thing, uh, no. higher uh, and a few advanced analytics real quick. And then we'll move on from Jermaine Byrne, a higher yards per route run versus zone than Roma Dunze. I found that interesting. Mm. Higher, higher yards per route run versus man than Keon Coleman, much less impressive, <laughs> but a <laughs> higher yards per out run overall than Brian Thomas Jr. at 2.75. And I love BTJ too. I'm not saying Jermaine Burton's ahead of BTJ. I don't think that for a second, but I think Jer- I think Jermaine Burton is a buy at his current ADP. He's a, he's a player with legit upside, Casey. We've talked about this, you know, really throughout the entire summer, man. You, you've been very vocal, especially talking about, you know, once we get to like the third, fourth rounds of our dynasty rookie drafts, you want to take a chance on these players with real upside. And you said that Burton has mm, legit upside sure. and, and you're hundred percent right. Yeah, no, I I love it. I love I love the rookie shot here, and he's kind of right in between uh, Myers and Sutton in that thirteenth round. So I think that was a good a good pull there. And then did you have one more that you like there? And I, and I and I I do. I if you've been following along, I love I love the shot on Burton. Hasn't necessarily been 
been getting his shot with with the first team, but when he gets out on the field, he always makes a play, and that's what you that's what you like to see. They made there was an odd Herb Street comment about you know falling asleep in meetings or something. I don't know if that meant anything or if he really did fall asleep in a meeting or something. Uh, but uh, in that Jer- in that last game that they played, so Jermaine uh, but, Burton. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that's um, news to me, man. I I did not know that. But I, I do. There, there's, there's juice there, and and it's worth the squeeze. I think. And like you said, there, there's, so there's a lot of factors, uh, and leaning towards the really good side of thing. The bad side of the thing is, is that there was some character concerns off the field stuff, possibly, and that's what's kind of drug it down. But I love it. Take the shot here. It, it's, it's in the third, third round or the thirteenth round. Those things are baked in. Who cares if it works out or doesn't work out? But that, that's, that's some, that's some good juice right there. So, you got another rookie for me. Yeah, the final rookie I'm going to yap about today is Jalen Polk. So, Ooh. I again, another – I know I mentioned Corlin Sutton may be the cheapest wide receiver one that you could find uh, right here, man. And and this is a little bit hotter of a take because, you know, people want to say it's Demario Douglas. People want to say it's Javon Baker who was drafted a little bit later. But yeah, I'm going to tell been, you, man. I've been rolling with Polk for, I, for most of the season here. I think it's Jalen Polk, man. I, I And I've also said this on the pod in the past. I think if there's one rookie who is going to be, uh, you know, just a phenomenal ROI, a rookie that without question will just, again, be a positive ROI. I can't be any more clear. I, I think it's I think it's Jalen Polk. I, I don't I, I really don't see how, you know, aside from an injury, I don't see how Jermaine, um Jalen Polk does not emerge as at least a top two option a receiving option in this offense. And I think it's going to be one man. I really think he's going to be the guy. I think it's going to be very soon. Yeah. He's, he's looked good in the preseason drink. Uh, he's, he's looked really good in camp. He looked really good. Most importantly at Washington. Mm. And uh, I, you know, whether it was him earning targets with some of the best, wide receivers in college football between, you know, Roma Dunes and shout out to Jalen McMillan, another really good player. Shout out to the Buccaneers, man. I thought they did a good job with, with, with their draft this season, but with Polk, like I love the size six, one, two Oh three, the draft capital, man, 37th overall. Uh, I, I think Drake may has looked very, very appealing. I'll yeah, tell you maybe. what, I, I don't know what Gerard Mayo is doing, man. I like, I, I'm just, I'm probably going to sound like, I, I don't know. I, I like, w- w- I'm sorry, brother, but like, what, what are you doing? Why are you, what is all this like Jacoby Brissett talk, man? Just, just play Drake may just play him man. give us for content purposes. He is the better quarterback already. I, I, he, I he think did, Drake, he did say today or yesterday that, that he, he thought that, that may has played better than Brissett plus Brissett oh, just wow. maybe got injured in this last preseason game. Yeah. So, you know, wow, that might, hot, it might have closed the door, but I'm I'm of the the school of maybe the Patriots aren't great right now, and hey, let's let's wait until week six or eight to let May get in there. Let's let's give it a little bit more time, but it seems like it's playing out completely different, and May's going to get in there, and and May has looked good. You know, climbing the pocket, comfortable back there, athleticism on display when it needs to be, nice touch, nice deep ball, looking down the field. Yeah, uh, so I, I love it, and and Polk. You know, the faster they can they can form a connection, which, you know, it hasn't it's been good. You've seen seen some screens and some short stuff to him. You saw in this last game, a nice a nice feathered intermediate pass to Polk. And I think that's his his strong suit is is that short intermediate game um, and just racking up catches uh, and then going to work after he catches it. So, yeah, I again, you, like you just nailed it right there, man. He's. I, I found it really interesting that New England drafted him way before Javon Baker. It kind of tells you what they think of him, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, actions speak a lot louder than Which, words. That hasn't been a great sign for New England for yes. receivers. <laughs> is, but it's a new day, it. new dawn. So, yep, it's a new era in New England. Yeah. But yeah, man, they've been uh, they've been missing left and right on receivers, especially. Yeah. Uh, you know, Polk has. You know whether it was him having more receptions than Marvin Harrison Jr. this past year, more receiving yards than. Uh, Xavier Worthy or higher contested catch rate than Malik Neighbors. Like these are just a few things that he did last year with Roma Dunze candidly in front of him. Like, you know, I hell, what if what if Rome went down, man? Imagine what Jalen Polk could have done. Yeah. Uh, I I think I just I think Polk is yeah. I think oh, New England like had it. such a good draft. I'll, I'll and, leave it at that. And, and he's crushed this draft. I tried to stay out of the rookie in the in this buys list because they're all fresh in a lot of people's minds, but I do think that that Polk is probably still one of the mo- more attainable ones because p- 
people just really aren't bought into what's going on with him and and the situation and and what he can be. Um, so I, I think you can pry Polk. You know, it's going to be really hard to pry Xavier Worthy away from somebody right yeah. now. It's going to be really hard to pry Brian Thomas away from somebody. But Polk may, you know, there may be a window still where you can barely add what somebody paid for Polk, and they they might be okay with letting him go. Uh, early on in the season here because they just don't like where the Patriots are going or they just didn't really like the pick and they were just pigeonholed into taking it. So Polk seems like somebody that's still obtainable. So I like it. I like it. All right. I'm going to wrap this thing up by just digging in the dirt here with some some low end guys that I think uh, are guys that basically that I when I get into the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th round that I always find myself kind of grabbing. And there's a huge list of these guys, but I've, I've narrowed it down to a few that I kind of like. That you know, maybe these guys aren't necessarily uh, world beaters, but I think they have a chance, and I think that they're, they're, there's a chance that the value goes up. So these these guys are you know hopefully guys you could get for a third or a fourth, or, or it, as throw-ins in packages, right? Um, and Michael Wilson would be the first guy on there. He's at fifteen ten. Maybe you can't get him for a third right this minute, but you know maybe you can finagle him in a package there. But as this thing kind of winds down here. I find Keaton Mitchell really interesting at 1611. He was ready to explode last year and then just had a had a knee injury and it was a bummer. Um, but Derrick Henry, you know, older and and who knows how long it'll be around there. And then really after that, that whole backfield's kind of up for grabs, right? And I, I thought Keaton Mitchell was really if, if if he hadn't have gone down, this his ADP would be really high right now. Not not maybe not like second or third round, but I think he'd be more in the seventh, eighth ninth, 10th round kind of area because he was really explosive and was really gaining a lot of traction there and was a lot of fun to watch. So uh, might be a little slow to start, but one of my favorite grabs there at 16, um, I try to get him in any deal that I'm putting together. If, if somebody has Keaton Mitchell, you know, th- these guys aren't necessarily guys I go and try to just singularly trade for, but I build in packages because, you know, it's it for a third for Mitchell seems like, yeah, that might be a little much if he comes back and hits. It's great, but I, I probably don't want to just go ahead and just throw a third out there for Mitchell. I want to try to maybe build him in a package, but love getting Keaton Mitchell and in a draft late redraft, certainly not, but any dynasty draft that you're doing, you know, right now, Keaton Mitchell is one of my favorite late round guys, Rico Dowdle, same thing. Um, not nearly as fun and sexy, but could get, could be a really cheap RB one for, for the Cowboys right now. Uh, and, and maybe Dalvin ends up there or maybe somebody else. But uh, I think Rico can have a chance there. And you have Wandell Robinson um, and Darnell Mooney, two of my favorite receivers to take shots on a little later in, in drafts here. Wandell, I think, can come out and be just a PPR machine. When he's healthy, he's he's put up some good stretches. We just need Wandell to be healthy. I think the Giants are going to be a little better than everybody thinks this year. Got to rebuild offensive line. I know everybody hates Danny Dimes, but... Uh, if you can just give him a little bit of time and, you know, it might not be sexy all the time, but I think Wandell can be that guy for them to just, you know, move the chains, do some dirty work for him. Uh, like I said, we, we've seen some success. Darnell Mooney, you have to go back to the rookie year of the success that he's had. He's going to get a big opportunity. Rondell Moore's injured. Uh, like we talked about to start this thing off, it's basically Drake London, Kyle Pitts and Bijan. And then it's kind of wide open. He kind of fits a mold of being a field stretcher for them. Um, Kirk can can certainly facilitate more than more than one or two guys of being fantasy relevant. I'm not saying Mooney's going to be startable every single week, but I think Mooney's going to have some really good games um, and and maybe reestablish a little bit of value. So so buy in now. Like I, Wandell and, and Mooney would be guys that I would say you know sing, send singular thirds for um, and see if I could scoop them up, put them on the bottom of my team, and then uh, kind of see what happens there. Uh, two running backs. I like Ty Chandler right now. Super cheap. I'll throw him on every team. I've been going after him with thirds. The Vikings just lost JJ. They've got uh, Sam Darnold in there. They're they're kind of talking about establishing the run, wanting to be a little bit more run run heavy. Aaron Jones, I think, is a really good back. Hasn't been the healthiest. Ty Chandler looked really good at points last year. So good that they've kind of cleared everything out, and he was their guy. Then they went and picked up Aaron Jones. But they're going to probably have a little bit of a rotation. I think you can get a hold of Ty Chandler right now for really cheap. And if there's an injury, I think it would be huge. Uh, and then I think week one and week two, you're probably even going to see a little Chandler and he's an explosive guy. So if he gets going, the value in market, the grip is going to get a little tighter on on a guy like Ty Chandler. So I think now's the time to pounce on him. Uh, and then a super cheap guy that I'd throw in some deals is, is Khalil Herbert. Uh, I've been kind of just snatching him up if I can in, in, in some uh, in some late round deals. I know 
They have Swift over there, and I know they have Roshan over there. Injuries happen. I think Herbert's been really productive when he's on the field and, and, and a pretty good player. Those are the kind of guys late I want to grab. Chuba is another interesting one, kind of late in drafts now. It might get eaten up by Jonathan Brooks later, but Chuba is a guy that you could buy now, and if especially if you're a Brooks owner or somebody who wants to draft Brooks, and you can kind of go through September and October with Chuba, who I think is going to get a decent amount of work and be pretty productive, um, at least from – the cost perspective of where you're buying them. And then you can transition into Jonathan Brooks a little bit and they can transition into Jonathan Brooks a little bit. So, all right. So those are just a few of my favorite later round guys. I wanted to throw in there before the season starts that I found myself kind of drafting and, and looking at a lot around leagues when I'm, when I'm form, forming trades um, and, and, you know, kind of using the ADP as a barometer of, you know, how much those guys cost relative when, when people are starting up new, and I think that's you know a good good way to approach which guys you can get at at which prices when you're when you're putting packages together. So Austin, did you have anything to add to that, or are we we ready to get out of here? Yeah, I just want to touch on Chuba Hubbard for for a hot sec, man. I think that was my favorite player that you mentioned based off his ADP. I mean, we're talking about a running back who right now is going off the board in redraft as running back forty two. Mm. Casey, he was RB nine last year in rushing attempts. Uh, Chuba Hubbard literally had more rushing attempts than like James Cook, uh, Josh Jacobs, Kyron Williams, uh, DeAndre Swift, Brees Hall, Ken Walker. Like, you know, th- this is uh, he, the Good volume. Was, the volume was extremely blatant. Yeah. And and uh, we don't know what the and I love Brooks. I love Jonathan Brooks. I really don't like him in redraft, especially early on. I think he could be a league winner later. That's when you want to buy early on once, you know. There is a GM who's frustrated, whether it's early to mid. But uh, I'll tell you what, man, I am I am all in on Chuba Hubbard early on this season. If you go zero RB, he is a perfect target. He is someone who you have to leave your draft with if you go wide receiver heavy to start, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So no, I call. love it. I love it. All right. Let's wrap up. We got we got Austin back in the fold. We're looking forward to getting um, this season underway. We're going to do a live show. Um, next week, uh, kind of primer into the season, just have a, a little hollabaloo, a throwdown. We're going to talk some wins, loss, some division totals, um, you know, throw any extra fantasy talk that we want in there. We'll be live. So if you guys want to come in and, and have some questions answered or throw some stuff at us or talk some shit, you're more than welcome. Um, looking like maybe either Sunday or Monday, one or the other. Um, and we'll be there for your pleasure. So it's been a fun off season. Uh, This was probably one of the last shows we'll do. Appreciate it, Austin. It's been a a great ride, and I'm excited to get into the uh, actual, uh, you know, we've been talking shit all offseason, who's right, who's wrong, this, that. You know, we get get to figure a little, another piece of the puzzle here real soon, so it's exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, figure out that I've been wrong about everything over the past (laughs) six months, so. Yeah. I'm ready, man. Throw this whole show out. It's all wrong. All right. Uh, until next time, be sure to check in on the on the uh, Patreon side of things. We got a free Discord. We have all sorts of great stuff on the FFD Patreon, on the FFD Discord. You can get three extra episodes over there. Um, and then on when we get into season, we're going to be doing most likely at least like a Sunday night recap of what's going on over there on Patreon. Um, gonna try to do some Saturday night ones but sometimes those are harder to uh, get together but that'll be a lot of fun doing some Sunday recaps kind of right after games close up you know 9 o'clock Eastern gonna try to do that every week um, just as a, a little fun fun thing to do get together with the boys and, and, and have some fun so hope to see you there hope to see you live next week we'll catch you next time peace <laughs>